Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Porter coming up here on today's show. Las Vegas Raiders cut candidates for this offseason. I understand that it's the bye week. I understand that the Raiders still have five games left to go here in the regular season. However, though, when you consider the fact of where the Raiders are currently at for this season, you always have to be looking forward. And the Raiders do have some players on their roster that even know that their contracts go beyond 2024, I believe they're going to end up cutting this offseason. To make sure that you don't miss anything going on around the silver and black, if you bleed silver and black, if you're womb to the tomb, if you're a new Raider fan, at the end of the day, the Raider support man, it's a big time family. But this offseason, I'm telling you all right now, I've been doing this show since 2018 and every single day since 2018, man, we've put a video out here on this YouTube channel. This offseason is going to be the craziest offseason that I have ever covered. And I don't want you to miss it. I want us to all be a family here. Make sure you're subscribed. It's going to be a hell of a time. All right, here we go. We're going to look at some cut candidates here for the silver and black. And there's some pre-June 1st and some post-June 1st cuts. I'll talk a little bit more about those post-June 1st cuts here in just a second. But the cuts that are going to happen before June 1st. So think about the brand new league year. That league year gets going. There's going to be some guys that get cut. Brian Hoyer, to me, is a name that is going to be cut on this team. Does it make sense financially? No, not really. But I do think that if I'm a brand new head coach, if I'm a brand new general manager, I want to be able to build my team and every single one of those players on that 53-man roster is going to be an important player on that team. Hoyer was signed this offseason to a two-year deal, so he's actually going to be a free agent in 2025. But let's keep it real here. Brian Hoyer is not a top 50, 60 quarterback in the NFL, like, there's dudes that might not even be employed right now that are better than Brian Hoyer. Did Brian know McDaniels the system? Sure he did. That's great. But if the Raiders move off from him, they're going to eat $2.6 million, and you're only going to save $167K. If I'm an NFL team, and again, I'm a brand new head coach, I'm a brand new general manager, I'm going to look at that $2.6 million that, yes, I'm eating, but I'm trying to build a team. I'm trying to build a locker room. And Brian Hoyer is not going to be part of that future. So to me, that extra roster spot is worth so much more than what I'm losing in Brian Hoyer. Let's go to the next name here up for my Raiders cut candidates. It's Brandon Faison. And when the Raiders signed Brandon Faison to a two-year contract this offseason, I was a little bit confused because he's an okay corner. I thought the Raiders could have invested their money in a little bit of a better spot, but he's not going to be a free agent until the 2025 season, and he's been injured this entire season due to a shin. But the reason why he makes this list is because of the money that you can save. If you end up cutting him, you end up saving $3.3 million, and the dead money is three hundred and fifty k. Like, again... Can Brandon Faison be a good corner in the NFL? Sure, he's like an average corner. When I ask you all scale of confidence, 1 to 10, he's a 6, right? And when you have that, but you can still rebuild, like I'd rather take a chance on a younger corner in my first year, year of rebuilding the Raiders instead of paying Brandon Faison 3.3, who didn't play this season because he was injured. Let's go to a little bit more of an outside-the-box name. It's Jacob Bobbenmoyer, and some of you are probably like, Mitch, why the hell are you kick, uh, You cutting the long snapper? I'm cutting the long snapper because I said on this show a few months ago when the Raiders cut Trent Sieg and they went out and signed Jacob Bob and Moyer, Daniel Carlson and A.J. Cole, they were pissed off. I heard that from multiple Raiders players because think about it from their standpoint where you're A.J. Cole, you're Daniel Carlson, you're like, well, wait a minute, we're both pro bowlers and you're going to take away our long snapper just because you want to have a guy who fits your scheme better? That's what Bob and Moyer was. And by cutting Bob and Moyer, you're going to be saving $1.13 million. I'll tell you this right now. I don't know if Trent Sieg's going to be available next offseason. In fact, he's playing for the Dallas Cowboys. We're playing Thursday Night Football tonight. But to me, Bob and Moyer is the name where I'm moving on from him if Trent Sieg is available. And personally, I think Daniel Carlson and A.J. Cole, even if you have to pay Trent Sieg a little bit more than you would pay a traditional long snapper, the difference between from what I've seen from Carlson from 2022 to 2023 
is so much of a big difference. If I got to pay my long snapper an extra $150,000 to get the Carlson that I had in 2022, I'm going to pay my long snapper an extra $150,000. Now, I still got a few more names here on my cut candidates list, but man, major, major shout out to today's sponsor, Price Picks. And for all y'all that are watching this live right now on Thursday Night Football, we're having a hell of a time tonight with Price Picks. And also for those of you that don't watch this live, guess what? I know the Raiders don't play this week. Watch a Sunday game. Pick a Sunday game. Maybe it's the game that I'm going to be live this week. Texans, Broncos. Pick a few players, more or less. You're going to be so into that game because you have a chance to win money. It's a lot of fun. And your significant other, if you want to get her involved, Alex was locked and loaded during Thanksgiving. When we were watching the Cowboys play. Sure, the Cowboys blew out the Commanders, but we won money that day. And she had a lot of fun doing it. And hell, she was asking me if we were going to do it again this weekend. Not what I was hoping for, for do it again. But we're going to play a little bit of prize picks. And you guys can too by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. Again, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. For my picks this week, these are the games that I'm going with. And I'm going to be real with y'all. The way that I look at prize picks is I don't always pick the games that I think are the best chance. I pick the games that I know that I'm going to watch. And some of y'all are like, Mitch, that's probably a dumb advice thing to do in terms of making money. You're probably not wrong. But I look at it from an entertainment factor. I'm going to be watching Broncos Texans on Sunday for three plus hours. I'm going to put down 20 bucks and I'm going to have a chance to win $200 with this right here. Sure, Brock Purdy doesn't play in that game, but you know what? Brock Purdy against a good Eagles team, I'm going to take the more on his interceptions because he struggles against good teams. C.J. Stroud more, Russell Wilson more. I want to have fun. The entertainment value is already paid into it, and you have a chance to win some money. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. That link's going to be available to you guys down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. Let's go to the next cut candidate here, and here's the thing. I'm so confident that the Raiders are going to cut Brian Hoyer, Brandon Faison, and Jacob Bobbin Moyer, and Britton Brown this offseason that I'm literally going to title this video, Players That the Raiders Are Going to Cut. You're going to cut Britton Brown. Like, when the Raiders drafted Brown in 2022, it was a head-scratcher move. I don't really think a lot of people understood it, but the more and more you see how... McDaniels and Ziegler ended up going down. You can understand, well, why they don't have a job anymore. Brent Brown's going to be a free agent in 2026. He's been injured. He's not good at football. Like, I'm sorry, he is a traditional, old-school type of running back who runs very upright, who can't catch the football, who has no idea what he's doing as a blocker, and you're hoping he can run between the tackles because he's not that great of an athlete. Like, Brent Brown's not going to be around next year. You cut him. You save $965,000, basically a million dollars, basically a vet minimum contract. Like, I don't understand what the value would be to be to, be to keep Britton Brown. Sincere McCormick is better than him. Yeah, sure, get it. Zamir White stinks, but I'm not keeping another running back in that regard. So think about this, okay? My Raiders cut candidates, okay? I didn't list them, but any player that was drafted by Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels on day three in the 2022 or 2023 NFL draft, you got to be on the hot seat. Like, Tyree Wilson, they're not moving off from him. I'm not saying they're going to cut him, but you're on the hot seat. And why do I say that? If you know that you have a brand new regime, and brand new regimes we saw with Alex Leatherwood, dude was drafted in the first round, and then he got cut in the following offseason. If you're not a part of that regime, they don't mean anything to you. And when you see how much that the picks that McDaniels and Ziegler have drafted have struggled so far in the NFL, the only names to me that are safe, obviously Michael Mayer ain't getting cut. Tyree Wilson, he's not going to get cut. And then Dylan Parham, not going to get cut. After that, I think every single other player has at least a chance to get cut. Not saying they will. I'm saying that they have a chance and they're on the hot seat, which a lot of players entering their second year are not usually on the hot seat. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, the two players most likely to be post-June first cut. So in the NFL, there's a rule where you can designate two players and only two players. Now, you can designate one, but at most two players 
to be a post-June 1st cut, which essentially means you still cut the player in March, right when the brand new league season starts, and they can sign with every other team. However, when June 1st hits is when you get that money. So the players that I'm about to mention, the Raiders will not have during free agency in the start of March. You get that money post-June 1st. But because of the way the contract is structured, it makes more sense to cut these two players post-June 1st. Now, I know a lot of y'all are probably maybe wondering about some other names, but the Raiders do have 16 2024 free agents. And I know some of y'all are going to be asking me about some of these names. Oh, Mitch, could the Raiders cut Amir Abdullah? Could the Raiders cut maybe a player like Austin Hooper? They're going to be free agents in 2024. So you don't need to cut them. The only question is whether or not you want to resign them. And whether you're watching this live or not, there is going to be a, a video up on the Raiders Report YouTube channel around the 2024 free agents and whether or not I would bring them back the silver and black. So let's go to my very, very first post-June 1st cut candidate, quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. And I'm sure some of y'all have already seen me talk about this before, but Garoppolo, even though he was given a three-year contract and he's technically been given like two or three different deals at this point. It was the first deal that he got, and then it was the second deal that he got after the Raiders found out that he was injured, and then there was the restructure with the, all these extra void years and whatnot. But the reason why he's a cut candidate here is because Garoppolo's not good at football anymore, and he was only signed because Josh McDaniels wanted him to be the quarterback despite every intelligent person out there alive saying, do not go out and get Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to be a free agent in 2026, but due to his contract, he has to be a post-June 1st cut. If the Raiders cut him right now, or if they cut him when the season ends, right when free agency starts, before June 1st, you end up eating $28 million, and you're only saving hundred k. You know what I mean? Like, you hear that type of number out there, like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, right? So if you cut Jimmy Garoppolo... Before June 1st, the dead money on that is $28.32 million, and you save $200,000. If you cut him post-June 1st, and you designate him as a post-June 1st cut, which, again, you can only have two players, the dead money, you're still eating 15.5. Thanks a lot, Josh McDaniels. But you're at least saving $13 million. And because of that, that's why he's going to be a post-June 1st cut. However, there might be some people out there that say, Mitch, I don't think that you should save that money. Keep Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup. Maybe you keep him as a potential, let's draft a, a young quarterback and a Garoppolo's there to be the backup guy. I don't think that's a smart decision. To me, it's an easy one. You're moving on from Jimmy G. But this show's about y'all. Should the Raiders cut Jimmy Garoppolo? Yes? No? Let me know down below. Because for me... It is as simple as Y, E, and an S. You're cutting Jimmy Garoppolo. He's been terrible. He's a Josh McDaniels guy. It's time to move on. Let's go to the next here post-June 1st cut candidate. And this is going to be one that's not going to be a popular name. I already know it's not going to be a popular name. But if I was running the Las Vegas Raiders, this is how I would operate my team. I would cut Hunter Renfro. And I know Renfro is a damn good receiver. However, I look at where this team needs to go. You have Devontae Adams. You have Jacoby Myers. I would like to get more opportunities in the hands of Michael Mayer. And I'd like to get the opportunity a little bit more to Trey Tucker. On top of that, I would like to have the ability to make a decision on what I'd like to do with the money around Hunter Renfro. So he's going to be a free agent in 2025. And I know Renfro's a good player, but he just isn't used the right way in terms of for what he's getting paid for. So to me, I look at what I can save in $11.88 million, okay? And this is a very important part of this conversation here. If I can save $11.88 million, I would rather use that money and put that towards a guy like Josh Jacobs instead of a keeping a player like Hunter Renfro. Now, you could even make the decision, maybe I don't keep Jacobs and maybe I don't keep Renfro. But I know this. I'm not going to sit up here and say, no, Josh Jacobs, I'm not going to offer you money, but yeah, I'm going to pay Hunter Renfro 11 point whatever million dollars when I know 
then in the heart of hearts, I would rather designate Renfro as a post-June 1st cut to then at least give me the flexibility to be able to give that money to Josh Jacobson, a brand new contract for this season. I get what Renfro is, and he's a good player, but I'm not going to pay him that money, and if I can save it doing a post-June 1st cut, guess what? To me, that's what's best for the Las Vegas Raiders. So, I'm going to ask you again, cut, save. Should the Raiders cut Hunter Renfro this offseason? Let me know down below. Type C for cut. Type S for save. In conclusion, if the Raiders were to cut the six players that I just mentioned, the four pre-June 1st and then the two post-June 1st, you would be able to save an additional $30.4 million. Yes, the dead money, that's money Mark Davis is going to have to eat. Sorry, Mark. You trust the McDaniels. You trust the Dave Ziegler. They led you in the wrong direction. You make enough money anyway. You're going to eat that money because if the Raiders can save an extra $30.4 million, that is at least three key players to this team helping us reach the ultimate goal, which is to get a Lombardi Trophy.